Dateline Polk with news about your county government. I'm your host, Kate West. Today, you'll learn about county commissioners' actions from the August 6th meeting. The board approved an interlocal agreement with Pasco County to acquire a portion of County Road 54 in northwest Polk County. The property is needed to install a gate and fence around the Rancho Bonita subdivision to protect the land from criminal activities. Commissioners approved an agreement of approximately $1 million with Jacobs Engineering Group for construction, engineering, and inspection services for the Auburndale Cutoff Road and Berkeley Road Phase 4 improvement project. Construction is expected to start in October and be completed in 15 months. Polk County Transportation Director Jay Jarvis joins us with project details. Okay, we had a consultant services agreement for doing construction engineering inspection for the uh, County Road 559A and Berkeley Road Phase 4 uh, widening project and it was basically to provide those services for inspection from Jacobs Engineering for the project that's getting ready to go to construction sometime here in the first part of 2014. In a public hearing, commissioners amended the Animal Control and Animal Services Ordinance to prohibit the destruction of a vicious dog that has severely injured or killed a domestic animal while off the owner's property. Commissioners approved other updates and clarifications to the ordinance as well. In May, KMR Concrete and a neighboring property owner in Bartow appeared before the board in regards to complaints about the site use and incomplete construction at the KMR Concrete facility. The board requested an update on the progress of the construction within 90 days. Land Development Director Chandra Frederick presented an update to the board. Today I gave the board an update on the progress of construction at the KMR concrete site located east of Bartow on State Road 60. Um, citizen complained in May 7, 2013 about the progress or the lack thereof on the site. The board wanted an update. I let them know that the applicant had had a pre-con um, to begin the site work. They're waiting on financing to really make substantial progress. We believe that once that progress is made, the citizens will see a reduction in the amount of dust and um, some of the um, impacts that they're experiencing as a result of the development. Also in public hearings, commissioners modified the development agreement for Victor Posner City Center in Davenport to increase the building area for retail, commercial, and restaurant uses. In addition, they rescheduled a hearing to August 20th to consider extending the exemption of residential construction impact fees for seven years. The board adopted the 2013-2014 Consolidated Action Plan, which outlines how the county will use its federal formula grants. These grants include the Federal Community Development Block Grant, Home Investment Partnerships, and Emergency Solutions Grants. Today we went before the board in uh, asking for a resolution of the uh, FY 13-14 action plan from the federal government. This money will be used for a number of different uh, projects, about 20 projects throughout the county that has to do anything from um, water and treatment sewer projects to um, municipality projects that the, um, the seven projects uh, I'm sorry, the seven projects, the seven cities get to use. And also we have some seven public service projects that go through the nonprofit industry. Commissioners approved a settlement agreement and release with Wharton Smith for remedial work to the air diffuser system at the Northeast Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility. The settlement does not affect the project contract amount. The board extended its contract with Clifton Larson Allen to audit the accounts and records of Polk County for fiscal years 2013, 14, and 15. The annual contract amount is $250,000. Board members approved an agreement with Martin Construction of Lake Hamilton for water main improvements in the Northwest Regional Utility Service Area. The agreement amount is approximately $2.2 million and approximately $104,000 for allowance work. 
Utilities Director Gary Fries joins us with a project update. Uh, we had one item in front of the Commission this morning for approval concerning a construction project in our northwest uh, service area. It's a water, uh, water system improvement pro project. Um, the bid was uh, approximately $2.1 million. The successful bidder was Martin Paving and it should start uh, within the next 90 days and it'll take about a year to complete and it's a, it's a project to improve uh, service reliability and, uh, and redundancy in the system in the Northwest service area. In regular board action, commissioners approve the minutes from their July 23rd board meeting as well as disbursements from the county comptroller. The board appointed David Carter, Dan Frodge, Chris Kay, Wayne Griffin, and John Lindsay Jr. to three-year terms on the newly created Stormwater Technical Advisory Committee. They appointed Omar Barba to the Workforce Development Board, and they also appointed Brett Burris as a regular member and T.L. Johnson as an alternate member of the Conservation Land Acquisition Selection Advisory Committee. Commissioners recognized Bartow native S.L. Frisbee for his recent induction into the Florida Press Association Hall of Fame. Mr. Frisbee is the former publisher of the Polk County Democrat, Fort Meade leader, and the Lake Wales News. Congratulations to Mr. Frisbee and thank you for your service to Polk County. Board members received an Achievement Award from the National Association of Counties in recognition of the Polk County Purple Heart Initiative. What we did today was present the board with a plaque that we received from the National Association of Counties and this was for the Purple Heart Initiative. Basically what it amounted to was we uh, used this Purple Heart Initiative to go out and perform outreach and make the veteran services uh, more available to the community. As a result of this, over the last fiscal year we improved, increased the uh, revenue through veteran uh, benefits by $24 million, a little, little over $24 million. So this is a vehicle for us and it's proved to be very, very, uh, you know, good in, in outreach. And, and that's basically what we do. It's uh, increasing and, and working with our veteran population. We've got over 60,000 veterans in Polk County and, you know, a considerable number of them being Purple Heart veterans. But this is just a way of bringing it to light and, and making everybody aware of the veteran uh, you know, population and, uh, and what we can do to help them. During the public hearings, the board approved a request by Faith Baptist Church to change the future land use designation of residential low on approximately 26 acres in Winter Haven to 24 acres of institutional and 2 acres of convenience center. Commissioners approved text amendments in the comprehensive plan related to drainage level, level of service standards and the Southeast Polk Selected Area Plan. Board members changed the Land Development Code subdistrict map for approximately six acres in Winter Haven from Institutional 1 to Institutional 2. Commissioners heard the first of two required public hearings for an amendment to the Land Development Code related to enclosed and open flea markets. The changes expand the number of districts where both enclosed and open flea markets are permitted. The second public hearing is scheduled for Tuesday, August 20th. And finally, the board members vacated a drainage easement in the Sago Palms subdivision in Bartow and a portion of right-of-way in Altoris. R.J. Walters, communications specialist for the Transportation Planning Organization, joins us now with an update on transportation projects in Polk County. Thanks, Kate. When you hear the words Polk Transportation Planning Organization, I wanted an image of a community that has safe access to its needs to come to your mind, not just fresh asphalt and long lists of high-dollar projects. And here in Polk County, that community involves an aging population that isn't getting any younger or smaller in number. Studies show that by the year 2020, nearly a quarter of Polk's population could be 65 or older, meaning there are and will be many seniors who are trying to adjust to life with less and less time behind a steering wheel. To initiate a conversation that focuses on the mobility options, needs and challenges of Polk's aging population, the Polk TPO is hosting an advisor network community forum titled Mobility for Life on September 24th. It will take place at 6 p.m. at the Polk Museum of Art in Lakeland, where light refreshments will be served and several door prizes will be raffled off. 
At this forum, one of the TPO's consultants will be presenting the results of a current study on transit and aging in place that looks at the access seniors have to public transit in Polk County. And Gail Hawley, a program manager for the Florida Department of Transportation, will be presenting information on the Safe Mobility for Life program, which offers strategic plans and valuable resources for Florida's aging road users. The forum is intended to determine some of the voids that need to be filled in Polk County to adequately accommodate people who are transitioning into new transportation needs that might include medical care, worship services, entertainment, shopping, and more. Look for more information on the Senior Mobility Forum in the coming weeks on Polk TPO's Facebook page and Twitter account at Polk TPO. You can also give me a call at 863-534-6709. On the TPO's social media pages, you also find a detailed report on what transportation projects ranked highest in the collective conscious of Polk County citizens after a discussion at the May 14th Advisor Network meeting on priority transportation projects. Speaking of priorities, it would be in your best interest to make a mental note of the following road closures that could hinder your travel for at least the next week. A couple of projects on State Road 540 in Lakeland should be on your radar if you do utilize it to get to the Polk Parkway or travel to Winter Haven. There are currently intermittent daytime lane closures on 540 from west of the Circle B Bar Reserve entrance to west of the Saddle Creek Bridge. Crews are currently working on making drainage improvements and smoothing out ditches as part of a project that is scheduled to be complete sometime this fall. Also on State Road 540, motorists will see delays just east of the entrance to the State Farm Office from 6 to 9 a.m. and 4 to 7 p.m. as crews construct a right turn lane. Motorists are advised to use caution while in this area. Notable progress is also being made on the State Road 60 US 98 intersection update project in Bartow. As new signs and signals are installed, daytime lane closures are expected on and off. Starting at 9 p.m. on Friday, August 9th and continuing all day on August 10th and 11th, the median opening that provides access to the north entrance of the Bardo Center from southbound US 98 will be closed for concrete work. All other entrances to the Bartow Center will remain open. Other areas of Polk County where you should be alert of possible slowdowns during your daytime travel include East Main Street in Lakeland from US 98 to west of Lake Bonnie Drive, US 27 from Ritchie Road to south of Barry Road where a traffic shift is in place at the intersection of US 27 and Waverly Barn Road, State Road 33 south of I-4 at Bridgewater Center Lane, State Road 33 north of Glenwood Drive, US 98 in Fort Meade from Ridge Road to Mount Zion Church Road, US 27 from the Highlands County Line to north of US 98, State Road 60 at Bailey's Road. State Road 37 at the Mulberry Bridge from south of State Road 60 over the Alifaya River. State Road 17 in Haines City from Aqua Vista Court to Robinson Street, where State Road 17 could be closed for up to five minutes at a time as crews work on installing power lines. And State Road 17, the scenic highway in Frostproof between F Street and I Street. And to kick off the list of nighttime lane closures in Polk County, let's stay right there. Work between F Street and I Street will also include a nighttime construction shift as crews try to finish the project by the end of the summer. Other lane closures for night owls to look out for include US 98 North at Lakeland Park Center, US 98 from County Road 548 to State Road 540, US 27 at Sand Mine Road, SR 563 Hardin Sykes Boulevard at Ariana Street, State Road 60 in Lake Wales from State Road 17 to County Road 17B, State Road 37 at the intersection of West Pipkin Road and Lake Merriam Drive, and South Florida Avenue just north of Main Street in downtown Lakeland. For information on emergency road closures, catch up with the Polk TPO online on Twitter and Facebook. Next time, I'll be back with a recap of the August 8th TPO board meeting and have more details on the September 24th Senior Mobility Forum. With information and updates on the plan that moves Polk, I'm RJ Walters. To keep current with programs and progress in Polk County, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We also encourage you to join us at the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, August 20th. Thanks for watching this edition of Dateline Polk.